Hi everyone, welcome to my stitch with me. I'm working today on Melody of the Night. This is a Leonid Afrimov chart. And do you know, I sort of have a love-hate relationship with this chart. Um, I absolutely love how it looks, but I seem to have a bit of an issue with stitching it. So I don't bring it out too often. And I think it's probably because there are so many color changes, I find it quite tiring. So I think the compromise for me is that what I've been doing is I've been doing little short spurts of stitching with this one um, rather than long periods of stitching because I find that that helps me to, um, to get through it happily without sort of abandoning it or even just, you know, doing it and not being too, too happy with doing it. So basically just doing little short periods of stitching has kind of worked for me. Um, on this particular chart, but it is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, just look at all these colors. They're just amazing, aren't they? And it is a really popular, Leonid Afrimov designs are really quite popular. So if you go onto the Heaven and Earth website or even to our Tessie who has them, and I'm sure there's probably other places that have them also um, where they are uh, legally licensed, you will find these beautiful charts and you'll be able to pick one that you like. And they all seem to have this very sort of similar artistic um, effect. So I'm going to work today on, I have been using uh, my grid pen here because I've been getting a little lost with the counting. I am doing this uh, 10 by 10 block at the moment, but I'm not doing a row by row. And I haven't actually tried working on this particular chart, doing a little bit of cross country that I've been doing recently on the other charts. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, I'm going to start off with some of my park threads that are already here because that's kind of the easiest way to start but sometimes i find it is it does take a little time to actually just get into it to get into a roll because initially it can be a little bit bumbly and and you find that you're not quite getting into it and then after a while you seem to ease into the process that can happen quite often um, so I'm not going to bother gridding right at this moment because I've got a good idea where I am with this pattern keeper. So hopefully today my stitching session is going to be a good one and I'm not going to come back swearing or finding that it's, it's not working because that does happen. Sometimes it just, you have, you could, you can actually have a bad stitching session. I think you'll probably agree with me um, if you do a lot of stitching that that can happen. Now, do I need to park this color anywhere? I don't like parking too far down, but I, I'm going to say about seven or eight stitches is okay. So I'm going to do it this time. So I'm going, I think it's here. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So I'm parking there. Now, I have been known to park in the wrong place sometimes, and then it gets a little bit um, difficult to try and remember where that thread was supposed to be to begin with. Hopefully today I won't be having that problem. So we're good to go. And this one doesn't need to be parked. Now I have been ending my threads at the back because I kind of gotten used to that. And it is so, so much quicker, but it's probably not the neatest. I'll give you that. So it really is up to you. I mean, if you prefer having a fantastically neat back then you'll want to see what you're doing behind there. But if you're not 100% worried about it, you could have a go practicing, cutting a thread at the back um, without flipping the thing over. But it really does depend, you know, on how much you like, how much you enjoy doing your end stitches behind. I do, I have sometimes ended my threads at the front, 
but it, it you know sometimes I, I do things and sometimes I drop them I drop those practices I suppose it just depends on the mood whatever takes my fancy again just one stitch now because this particular chart and the way I'm doing it and that I'm just so randomly picking it up or not picking it up um, I do not have any particular date in mind for finishing this chart this chart could get finished next year or it could get finished in 10 years and I'm absolutely not worried about it whatsoever because I'm trying to enjoy the process by not putting that time stamp on my head and I think that since I've said that, since I've allowed myself to let go in that way, I've enjoyed it all the more because I don't feel any pressure. I think pressure is one thing that I can do without at the moment. Of course, it's nice to see a little bit of progress here and there every so often. Some of these stitches can be pretty tight. So this is the way with this particular chart. There is a lot of colours within a very small square. And that just happens to be the way it is. And I'm not sure if that's any different for the different sizes of this or whether it's just the one I'm doing. I'm actually doing the small one. So it wouldn't surprise me if there was more confetti in this small one than, than what there usually is with the others. So I think if you choose a chart like this, you have to be quite happy with the um, frequent color changing. And I think if, if you're set up for that prospect, you'll be fine. But it is a sort of challenging chart. So, you know, as a big, if you were a beginner and you'd never done a heaven and earth design before, it mightn't be the easiest one to start with, to be honest. There are some gorgeous purples and blues in this chart. Absolutely amazing. Never get tired of seeing these vibrant colors. They do cheer me up. So I've been working on a bit of everything this week. I'm making steady progress on each little thing, which I think is pretty good. Now that colour can move out of the way. I'm going to start here. This one's got a couple of extra stitches, which is just as well. <laughs> a few extra stitches in a row can really be a treat, actually. So how is everybody's day going or how has your day gone? Today is Sunday and I've been out for a walk with my husband. We've enjoyed a little time together taking a walk and we popped into um, we popped into a store and we got a few things, something to cook a nice roast. So it's just been a relaxing day. Actually, no, today is Monday. What am I talking about? <laughs> you know, I can't tell one day from the next. I've completely lost. Since we had the whole lockdown thing, I just can never remember what day it is. 
and now that um, school is out and there's no more having to rush back and forth it's made it even more confusing as to which day is which so I'm mistaken today is actually Monday it's Monday and because my husband is off work and um, he's got some time off at the moment it's all getting a little bit confusing as to which day is which but no matter because every day is a stitching day which is good you know good enough for me and that's as far as I'm going with that color that lovely purple and there was something in the news recently about Strawberry Moon, and I think I missed it. There's a, an event that takes place, I don't know how many years, I'm not, I'm not the one who knows much about all this kind of science stuff. But um, it certainly is the case that you would look out at the moon and it would be a kind of reddish colour or a pinkish colour. And I thought that would be amazing. But then I totally forgot about it and I didn't um, even go to the window to have a look to see if that you know, if I could see anything. And then my husband said, well, it's really cloudy out, so you're probably not going to see anything anyway. So it seemed like a bit of a, you know, a bit of a shame that I wouldn't have seen anything anyway, even if I had looked. So if any of you guys saw anything, let me know. Be interested to hear about that. Because I really do like hearing about this science stuff. It really does interest me. Now we're going on to a lovely blue, a lovely rich dark navy. I love navy, beautiful colour. Gosh, I feel so blessed being able to sit here and do this and look at these gorgeous colours. I mean, something just that simple, just you know, having that blessing of being able to sit here and appreciate this. When you think about it, it's a really, it really is actually a big deal. So a fairly nice, quiet Monday. That's how I like my days. I like my days to be quite peaceful and um, no stresses, although I know you can't have a stress-free day every day, but you know, we can count on those, we can count on those good days when there's less stress or almost no stress. Um, those are the days that we really enjoy the most. Or we just look forward to some relaxing time so we can sit and do our projects. get a little bit more stitching done and it's amazing how many of you are going to your stitching projects you know simply for the relaxation and for being able to get stress off your back for being able to relieve anxiety I think that's really important I am quite an anxious person I probably don't sound like an anxious person people say I've got a very mellow voice and that I sound very calm but you know what those calm waters can look like underneath? There can be a lot of um, stuff going on underneath all that calmness. And anxiety doesn't automatically translate into, you know, flapping around and that kind of thing. I can be very quietly super anxious until at some point it explodes. <laughs> but um, I like, I think that finding ways and starting the stitching was one of them finding ways to not get too wound up or too stressed about stuff because um, <clears throat> life is stressful there's no question life is a challenge a series of problems and it's a stressful thing and so finding ways to relax is really important and I've learned that now as I've gotten older that it's an important thing to do. I wouldn't even have thought twice about that in my 20s. Wouldn't have thought about relaxing at all. I was too busy probably going out, 
chasing boys and you know being getting up to all kinds of shenanigans so for me de-stressing wouldn't be the first thing on my mind but when you get older I think you carry more weight of problems you carry the weight of other people's problems more like your kids and your parents and your friends so that all does add weight adds weight to your worries and that's when the stress comes in so yeah counting my blessings too is a really good way to keep me grounded just to remind myself you know it's not all bad like even in the darkness you can have good things there is some light to be seen Now, how many more colours am I going to do here? I've got one here. That's like a lovely light blue. Sort of like an icy, icy blue. So where am I going with this one? Down here. Just make sure I'm following Pattern Keeper properly. Down here. Oh, I have to go right down to the bottom. That's okay. I'm still within my 10 by 10. I think as long as I stay within that 10 by 10, I can't go too far wrong. Try a different colour now, like a sort of lemon colour. This lovely lemon colour is coming in. So don't worry about how long it's taking you to do one of your um, projects because think about how it's making you feel whilst you're doing it. And I've kind of been focusing on that a bit more. Like how am I feeling when I'm actually stitching? And if I'm not feeling happy, then I'm trying to analyse what's going on, whether it's because I feel like I'm working on the wrong project for me at that time. And that's totally possible because I can, say, be working on this one for a little while, feeling really anxious and not actually enjoying it. Then I can swap to a different um, project and then I feel really content. And I can't exactly explain. Sometimes things are difficult to put into words, right? But I can't exactly explain, you know, what it is about it that, that changes that concept. But I just know that it's made me feel differently or calmer or better or whatever it is. So it's interesting that the projects we choose to work on actually affect our emotions or how we feel at the time that we're doing them. Isn't that something interesting to think about? Or I could just be overanalyzing everything, which is totally, you know, something that wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> Miss Overanalyzer. That's my new name. Oops. I guess when you're stitching, you've got lots of time to think about stuff. So it would be natural to be thinking about stitching stuff. This is actually going fairly well. So many gorgeous blues.
I also think it's really important to take time out from stitching every so often because you might find that the reason you're feeling a bit grumpy or whatever is because you've just been overdoing it. And um, this happened to me recently, so I took some time off and all I did was a bit of knitting or reading, I actually caught up a bit on my reading because I was feeling like, you know, I, I used to love reading my books and I was thinking that I was feeling more propelled to do the stitching than the reading. And then I was feeling more obliged to do the stitching instead of reading. And then all my books are sort of sitting in a pile and never getting read, which kind of made me feel a little bit guilty or a little bit sad about that. So I said, right, I'm just going to spend a whole weekend not doing any stitching and I'm going to read my books. I may even do my knitting, whatever, but I'm not going to do um, any stitching. And, you know, it worked. I had a bit of breathing space. I was able to focus on something in a different way. And I realised that I'd kind of been overdoing it just a little bit. So it was nice to take a break, kind of like when you just take a holiday from anything really, just to get your mind, you know, back on track. And I have so many books to read. And I tend to read them at night when I go to bed, but that isn't ideal either because I find that I can't get too much read before I fall asleep. So I'm trying to find a good time of day to actually, you know, squeeze a bit of my reading time into. I think that the world now, the way the world is going is that there are so many, so many entertainments and, you know, things that we can pursue at our leisure that you just, we're so sport for choice. I mean, thousands of books, thousands of cross-stitch charts, thousands of diamond painting charts, thousands of knitting patterns, you know, there's, there's millions of everything and we're just kind of like you know, rotating around all this, all these millions of possibilities of things that we can choose. And we're choosing more and more of them, but just because we can, not because we're being forced to in any way, but just because we can, we're getting loads of projects and loads of whips and loads of books and loads of stuff. And I often wonder if we're just, you know, if we're just exhausting ourselves to some extent um, because, you know, when they say about sometimes it's good just to sit and do nothing, just to sit and be, and you think to yourself, how often do I do that? How often do I just sit and do nothing? For me, I think it's quite rare. I, do, I don't often sit and do nothing. Actually, I think I've missed a stitch somewhere, just looking at my pattern keeper now whilst I'm babbling away. I think I've missed that stitch. I have to go back and do it. Um, so are we missing out on something or are we better off keeping ourselves active and busy? I know that staying active and busy helps me worry less. I've got less time, obviously, to be fretting or mulling over things. But then I think half the time that I do that, it just makes me anxious anyway. So maybe staying busy is probably the best. Because if you sit and do nothing, it's hard to silence your mind. So I really envy those people that can just switch off any, at any time, at any given moment. Just completely switch off. How do they do it? Like even in stressful situations, there are people who have that ability to be calm. And I'm so um, kind of jealous of them. They're just calm. They just let things happen as they happen. And maybe they deal with it later in a panicked way or a different way. Or maybe they just don't panic at all. They just don't get, the feathers don't get ruffled. 
So what kind of person are you? Are you the type that is more inclined to panic and worry quite frequently? Or are you a calm person generally? That would be interesting to know. And I wonder if somebody can truly change their character, if they can truly change that. Mm, food for thought, definitely. I'm going to have to look into that a little bit more. And I wonder if it's got anything to do with this cognitive behavioural therapy stuff, which I was once uh, told to read about, and I wasn't quite sure what it was, but something about um, looking at your behaviour patterns and, um, you know, analysing how you behave, your, your kind of, your way of being, the way you look at things, the way you react to things. Um, that's really interesting. Has anyone ever successfully been able to change their life considerably just by doing that? Just by analysing themselves effectively and actually finding a solution. But there are so many books out there and so many gurus all, you know, having that miracle method. I don't really know which ones are kind of spammy or which ones are actually helpful any longer because the market is so saturated with stuff. Just completely saturated. And maybe this has something to do with colour therapy. Because I was saying about how these colours visually are so appealing, they kind of cheer me up. Maybe there is something in that too. Because if you're in a room that's got all greys and there's no bright colours at all, does that affect your mood? Or if you go into a room that's full of bright colours, how does that affect your mood? There could be something in that as well. All very interesting. Maybe the reason why these charts appeal so much is because of the fact that they're so colourful. And the other thing I find interesting that when I was watching this um, programme about Van Gogh and how he was living in this kind of asylum and he tried to kill himself, um, and he was clearly depressed in some form or other. And he he did paint such beautifully vibrant pictures. It would have been fascinating to go into his mind and see what he was thinking. You know, what led him to try and end his life and what was he so unhappy about? Um, and those pictures that he painted that was so vibrant, how did they not help him? You know, it's really interesting. So we're still on the blues, we're still on the blues here. I'm going to do a few more stitches. See how we go. I seem to be doing fine as far as the counting's going. There's been no hiccups so far, and that's without my grid pen at the moment. There's a lovely bird singing outside. I'm just wondering what his little song is actually saying to a different bird. Is he saying, come sit with me? I don't know if 
you can hear it. There's nothing more beautiful than the sound of birds singing, is there? Really nothing like it. Oh, look at this gorgeous green. I think I'm appreciating these colours more than the actual chart, which is quite hilarious. And even the stops and starts are not really bothering me too much at the moment. Sometimes they're tiring me out. Sometimes they tire me out really quickly, but I seem to be doing okay today. Oh, I'm supposed to have two stitches here. Hmm. Something, something, something. It's one, one, two, three. Ooh, maybe I should have put a grid. <laughs> I don't know where I've gone. I'm just going to do this one here. One, one, two, three. Okay, that's supposed to have gone in there, but never mind. Totally faffed up again. Maybe I should just go back to the row by row. Because I wasn't getting any problems with that one. Do you know what? I'm just going to go over the stitch that's there. I'm going to be a rebel. That's what I'm going to do. And then this one here. Let's see how that comes out. Be rebellious. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. For a couple of stitches, it's fine. And then I'm going to park it over here. Nothing wrong with being a rebel from time to time. Hard to see these little colours in here now. Okay, that one. I'm wondering if row by row is actually easiest on this chart now because you're less likely to make mistakes. I can't make up my mind. Now where am I going to park this one? Might park it on the side, just in between here. Space one. Just park there. And there I've got another blue one. Lovely, lovely blues. So I will be back on a live stream which I'm actually doing now on the Saturdays because it's a good day for me to get settled into it. So I'm really looking forward to chatting with you live and hearing about what you're stitching and what you're up to. It kind of keeps me going too. It's really motivating and encouraging. So check out my channel page and where I put some posts about the time that I'll 
be uh, streaming and you can also post a comment on there too I believe and you can let me know how you're getting on with your own progress that would be fantastic so I think I'm going to take a break I'm going to stop there for now give it a little break I don't think I've made a mistake but we'll find out later <laughs> I don't think it matters too much to be honest in this little jungle of colour but um, yeah I'm making steady progress and I'm quite happy with it so far so thank you for stitching with me again and I hope to see you soon take care